am Lori Flaquette of Soltar Solutions, and I'm here today on Focus Forward Live with Lori with Penny Isaac Nelson, and she is at... Penny, where are you? Tell us. You know what, Lori? I'm standing on the Hoover Dam at this moment. Wow, that's amazing. It's cool. It's very cool. What do you think of it? Well, it's... Um, it's a, what would you say, it's a feat of engineering like nothing I've ever seen before. It's pretty amazing. That's great. So tell us from a project management standpoint, what, what is your takeaway from this dam? You know, when I look at that, and I know you can probably see a little bit of it behind me, um, this is and was a monumental project. And when you think of what it took to build this dam and the amount of cement and concrete and pouring, um, breaking through rock walls and, and I think of them, just that alone for this project would be absolutely astounding. So when I look at what it put all the pieces together to make this happen, um, this is the project manager I'd like to be someday. <laughs> Not sure I want something quite this big, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah, the, the thing that I think is really interesting is that, that even though with, the, with this enormous, enormous project and um, the technology that we had back then, they still came in under budget and early. Yeah, they came in actually 15 million under budget and two years early, which is completely unheard of just that just doesn't happen especially back in the 1930s oh I was gonna ask you when it was built yeah they started it in 1931 and it was finished in 1936 so it took about five years and um, a lot of manual labor because of course there wasn't all the power equipment that we have now so tell us more about the dam tell us more about um, anything that you found out about the project what what type of <laughs> Um, management skills the people had anything you can tell us about it because it's so interesting yeah they really had um, pretty much every layer of project management team to do this so you of course got, got a layer of people that are you know the ones in charge and the the ones that are the um, more the architects and engineers and then a whole lot of manual labor it took to pull this off and uh, of course a lot of people died in making this because there wasn't the safety that we would have today uh, so when you think about just how much that took and the lives lost and the people that even had to come here and live while it was going while it was being built it's pretty amazing um, down below me I know you can't see it but of course the dam um, made Lake Mead which I'm sure we've all heard of and it's the Colorado River that um, holds that the dam is holding back Wow so I know that some of the cities that were came about or were created because of the workers living there. So can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? Yeah, the city that's the closest here is called Boulder City, and it's still it's still here today. But the reason it was built in the first place was for the workers and their families uh, that they actually were living in not real great conditions when they first began and people were dying of um, just a disease and just the uncleanliness of it. So they, act, they ended up having to build more of a city with uh, places to live that were a little more permanent for the family members to have a safe place to be. So, and I'm sure pieces of that are around here today, but it's a, it's a fully run-in city just outside the walls of the dam here. Yeah, so that's, that's interesting, um, especially, you know, going through the little city. It's... You know, you no. would you wouldn't really you wouldn't really think very much about the city if it was anywhere else. You know, right? It's kind of small. Yeah, it's so really what small. Else, what else can you tell us about, um, for instance, the terrain around the dam? What What do you think about um, creating a, a dam from that terrain? Well, it's all rock, of course. We're in mountains here. And so I can pan the camera here a little. Would that be helpful? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. You can lose me, but you can see. You tell me if I need to tip it or anything. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, and it looks like the water level
level is pretty low right now. The water level is really low, yeah. Uh, they say Lake Mead is down about 300 feet, which is really, that's a lot of water when you think about the size of this lake and, and that. I know in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, we, we have a couple lakes. One is called White Bear Lake that's down uh, several feet, 8 to 10 feet, and we think that's pretty bad. But this lake is down to over 300 feet, and it's really because of global warming and the, there's not as much snow in the mountains melting and making water. And, uh, and then just Las Vegas is only a half hour away, and, of course, that city uses a ton of water. Wow, that's interesting. Um, so is there anything else that you want to tell us? Maybe uh, some, you know, do you have any other ideas about project management through looking or through looking at the dam or also maybe um, learning more about the, the project management tools that were used then? Yeah, you know, the only thing that I would just add is um, the amount that it took for this, this particular project to get built and off the ground and finished. Um, I think about um, projects that, that we are probably more familiar with and how they're far less complicated than this project is, but really all the same skills are in use. You've got to have timelines, you've got to, have, you've got to stay in your budget, and um, you've got to have people that are creative enough to work around problems when they arise. I'm sure there were a lot of unforeseen surprises. We know we've talked about risk management in our process of uh, project management. So this is probably a great example of all the uh, things that popped up that people weren't, weren't expecting along the way. So I love thinking about that and just how they problem solve that to figure it out and still come in early and I had a budget. That's great, Penny. Thank you so much. And I hope yeah. that we're going to be seeing more of these amazing projects. I know the next one is going to be um, the Great Wall of China and you're going to be over there. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm, I'm going to hit the Grand Canyon tomorrow, but I don't know if that's a project. I think uh, man did not have much to do with that one. <laughs> well, that's awesome. You have a great time, and thanks so much for coming today and being on the show. I'm really excited that we were able to do this. Have a wonderful trip, and um, any other ideas you have about you, the project management in relationship to this dam as you go through and you learn things, let us know. We always want to hear okay. about it. All right, I will. All right, take care. Okay, you too. Bye-bye, Lori. Bye now. Lori Fleckett of Soltar Solutions, wasn't that amazing just looking at that dam and just thinking about what that took as a project manager, manager and many managers. So, And not only that, under budget and um, early. So that's the way to bring those projects in. So take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye now. <laughs>